السلام عليكم. Dear Imam Omar, I hope this finds you well. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. So I'm praying regularly again and going to the masjid. But it seems like every time you walk out the masjid, you've got that guy standing at the door, unassumingly looking around with the infamous charity box. In our case, it's Kareem who never seems to take a week off. If you're lucky, you'll have a dollar to get yourself out of an awkward situation. But this time, all I had was a 20. Sure, I felt bad about it considering the fact that the Imam just gave a sermon on how to trust Allah with all of your affairs and how dismayed Kareem seemed with me. I thought about giving him the 20, but I've seriously got a lot on my plate right now. Besides, what's $20 going to do? When you sit down and crunch the numbers over and over again, your expenses in life seem never ending and you feel like it's only a matter of time before it all falls apart. I look at my niece Fatima and see that innocent, stress-free child that I once was. She gets her daily allowance of one dollar just like I used to, and doesn't have to worry about spending on anything or anyone else. She's pretty picky about it too. For some reason, she prefers coins instead of bills. I just wonder what she does with all that change. Many times you don't get how blessed and stressless you actually are until you or someone you know is struck with tragedy. Yunus came by that day and informed me that Karim was actually hit by a car after Jumaa ah and suffered two broken legs. Yunus was collecting money from each member of the community to help pay for his medical expenses. I told him I didn't have much, but Yunus said that so many people were pitching in that anything would count. And suddenly that $20 I refused to put in Karim's box for the sake of Allah, went to Allah for the sake of Karim. We'd all love to live the lives of the rich and famous, but all that is skewed perception. Besides, Allah can take it away from you in an instant and leave you in a state of desperation, yet with a much needed dose of humility. That's when it's all put back in perspective and you realize the wisdom of the Prophet peace be upon him when he said that true richness lies in the heart. The smaller things in life start to mean so much more and you realize you still have a whole lot to be grateful for. My sister called that day to talk to Fatima as usual. And after talking about everything, and I mean everything that happened that day, she asked to speak to me. She told me to take Fatima to the toy store and let her do her thing. I asked her what she meant by her thing, and she said all I had to do was take her, and that Fatima would know exactly what to do. But just like with Karim, tragedy is always around the corner and people's happiest moments in life are often spoiled by unexpected disasters. But sometimes Allah spares you in His divine decree to teach you a lesson. And Allah taught me that lesson through Fatima. As her mom said, she knew exactly what to do. Apparently that second piggy bank is where she would keep her charity money, and every time she'd buy something for herself, she'd also buy a toy for a refugee child who couldn't afford to. Fatima explained to me that if Allah gives you, you should always give back, even if it's small, because it might mean a lot to someone else. As usual, the little girl with the big heart was right. So, as you guys can see here, Ziyara made the mistake that we always make, which is, 
what's this one good deed going to do? What's this one dollar going to do? What's this one act of kindness going to do? And the Prophet ﷺ, he warned us of that attitude. He said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا Do not belittle any one of your good deeds, even if it's serving a glass of water to your brother with a smile on your face. Because you don't know which one Allah is going to accept. I mean, we constantly hear these numerous examples from the Prophet ﷺ about the woman, for example, that entered into paradise, though she was an adulteress because she gave water to a thirsty dog. Or the man who was strolling in paradise because he removed something harmful from the road. The Prophet ﷺ said, if the day of judgment comes and you have a plant in your hand, even though you know the earth is going to be shattered and you can plant it, go ahead and plant it because Allah might accept it. And if Allah accepts it, then that's all that we want in this life. That's all that counts on the day of judgment. And that's why Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, he said that if I knew that Allah accepted a single prayer from me, then I would wish for death. And if you notice all of these different incidents that we go through with the Prophet ﷺ, they all include an act of kindness, an act of charity, an act of service. Why? Because Allah shows mercy to the merciful. And so when you demonstrate, when you display an act of mercy, the most merciful will not let your mercy exceed his. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you guys for watching this episode. We thank you all for your support. And we hope that you enjoyed watching it. Share it inshallah ta'ala, let people know. Make sure you like this video and you share it with your friends. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, make sure you click here. And if you'd like to watch the entire series, then click here for the playlist. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.